Stun guns are stunningly effective, but hard to reload. So that's where the mythical water stun gun comes in. But is this watery weapon really the favorite gadget of spies around the world? So you're the one that loves this, Smith. What's your plan? Well, the first thing we need to do is get a commercially available stun gun. And see what we can learn from it. Exactly. And then we'll make a water shooting gun and hook up an electrical source to it and see if we can shock the heck out of somebody. As long as that someone isn't me, I love this plan. And then we'll go from there. Perfect. Let's do it. So first up, they're going to assess the non-water using real deal. Oh. And before you can say, don't stun gun me, bro. Wow. I don't like the look of that. That looks like it would hurt. Because it looks so hurtful, Adam's taking no chances. We're obviously no strangers to being shocked on this show, literally and figuratively. During the production of Baghdad Pattery, Tori got shocked. Oh. Scotty got shocked. <laughs> oh my God. And I unwittingly got seriously shocked. Oh. So with this stun gun, oh. honestly, None of us feel comfortable either getting shot by it or seeing anybody else get shot by it. So, in this case, this dude here is our stand-in target. Three, two, one. <laughs> dude, that is harsh. <laughs> I hit him in the face. It turns out that a regular electric stun gun has wires that deliver a massive 50,000 volts through two of these barbed spikes. On contact with the bad guy, the volts instantly drop down to 5,000, causing neuromuscular incapacitation. And that simply means... When you get hit by one of these things, you lose all physical control. Your muscles, the nervous system, and everything just go haywire, and, and you can't deal with it. <laughs> Here at the Mythbusters Electrolysis Clinic, we use the latest techniques to make sure those pesky hairs never come back. So that's what the commercial stun gun can do. It's got a range of 15 feet. It puts out an initial charge of 50,000 volts, which drops to 5,000 volts on contact, causing neuromuscular incapacitation. But can an electrified water stream trump this trilogy? Well, just in time, a delivery's arrived by man. Water pistols. Can a toy become a weapon? See, the thing here is that in order for the electricity to be communicated to our victim via water, the water stream has to be continuous, i.e. laminar for you engineers out there. So I've got an arm full of all the latest water shooting toys. We're gonna shoot them on high-speed camera and see which ones give us the flow we like. First up, Adam sees red. By adding this dye, the water stream should be easier to analyze on the high-speed camera. This is the Heinemann at his most vulnerable working with red food coloring, his white shirt could be desecrated at any moment. With the spotless scientist still intact, the water pistol testing can begin. Little football, coming up. One, two, three. <laughs> you know, it looks like it's breaking up after just a couple feet or so. And that's something the high speed clearly shows. The moment it's out the barrel, the water breaks up into hundreds of distinct droplets. A 15-foot continuous laminar stream, this ain't. Cue the two-chamber deluxe edition. I've got high hopes for this one, but we'll see. But that breaks up, too. They pull a different pistol, and another, and another. But they all break up, meaning there's no path for any charge to travel through. What's next? It's the last one. <laughs> it doesn't get any simpler than that. It's just a big tube. Yeah. All right. Let's see what it does. With only one potential pistol to go, it's the myth's last throw of the dice. All right, I'm ready. Like the others, this fun gun sure is a super soaker. But is it laminar? That is by far the best one we've tried yet. At last, the high speed gives it the thumbs up a 15-foot totally continuous laminar flow. Now the question is, can we get electricity into this stream? Can we get it to a person? And when we do, is it a reasonable stun gun? <laughs>